Okay, but just. All right. Okay. Oh, th well, thank you. Uh -huh. So, <clears throat> so maybe we can start. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to discuss today and tomorrow, I am going to discuss things that I mostly refrain to discuss namely a relation between um, between what between uh, equivalent volume stuff and uh, integrable systems oh So, so piece, pieces of this, of this are conjectural, you, so you will see. Uh, however, understanding that uh, we should go beyond CP1 and C to general toric manifolds and uh, the U1 actions higher u1 actions action of, of u1 to to the power d on toric manifolds that are d-dimensional and d would be the world sheet not the target space move my attention back to integrable systems so actually Um, there was a work of me and Igor Palubin. And then there is a full work of, let me try to find the first collaborator. Uh, okay, I'll give it. So, so someone that part of is, uh, that part of, of board is not visible. We ah, it's only sh from Shadrin. Uh -huh. No, it's not polite to give only sh from Shadrin. I forgot the first collaborator. Okay, I'll find the, in the during the break. Okay, <clears throat> who? And here I need to, to thank Fock, who, gave, who basically explained me as the integral structure appearing here. So I actually considered all this as a separate subject that is not linked to the main line of development. But uh, now I see that, to, that it can have more future. More future because of appearance of several spectral parameters. And this life with several spectral parameters is really new. And, uh, and what is going to be 
the Baker Heider function for this new uh, integrable system should be related to equivariant volume. And then you will explain the words, right? So, sorry? You will explain these words, right? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, so, equivalent volumes I already explained. Mm -hmm. So, so there is something that I already explained, mm -hmm. namely equivalent volume of quasi -mass. So this was explained. Spectral parameters, I will say what, what could it mean. So I'll explain what baker heder function is and the tau function. So I do not assume uh, any, no, any previous knowledge of uh, integrable systems. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why <coughs> I'll explain something uh, in my own way. Okay. So no knowledge of integrable system is requested. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the way how I will explain it would be different from the way how other people would explain it. But I explain it in a way related to this stuff, okay? So it's not this stuff for integrable systems. So I like, I like not all integrable systems. I like integrable systems that are related to this stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. So let me start with the plan for today, okay? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to explain today would consist of two parts. One part before the break, then we will have a break, and one part after a break, okay? Mm -hmm. So before a break, I'll explain two equations. So one is commutativity and second would be so-called flat times. But this flat times is an old uh, naming. I would actually prefer to consider it as a special equ equation. Unfortunately, I don't know how to call it. So before the break, we will study the following issue. I already mentioned it, but uh, I would like to repeat it, issues. A, deformation of the space of solutions to commutativity. Point B, solutions flat times. So I actually think that this flat times equation 
should be replaced by some other name. However, I don't know yet how to call it. So, uh, the, the focus of the camera behaves very strangely. So, it's sort of visible in some places and not visible in other places. <clears throat> so, it's something new. Uh, so, I will re rearrange it. What happens now? Are the same. It's sort of very badly visible in the middle of the board. And badly visible in the yeah, middle. Yeah, yeah, where you're pointing, it's very sort of murky for some reason. I suggest you to clean your lens of the camera. I think that would be. Ah, that's the you see. And this is because of. Good, good suggestion. One second. Maybe. What would you say now? Oh, it's uh, yes, yeah, much better. So we are the camera is turned too much upwards, so it should be. Maybe. Ah, but it's uh, the them. But, them but, yeah. This is. Mm -hmm. But this is not the problem. You see, it's it's geometry yeah. and. Uh, that was optics. Yes, no, no, this is much better, yeah. Okay, so and I would go slowly because mm -hmm. I assume because I assume that uh, these topics are not known. Moreover, I will let you follow me here. So I did it in uh, Netherlands and Robert Digraf won a bottle of beer. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, we will discuss this mm -hmm. before the break. And then we will... And here I make a side remark. on how to generalize mm, not generalize I would say solve Alexei Zinger enumerated problem. So I'll discuss it very briefly. And maybe if you will be interested in it, we could come back to it later on. Because mm -hmm. this side remark could grow, could grow to a step in solution to Jacobian problem. Not could, may grow, and may not, you see? Here I'm not here I'm not one hundred percent sure. And then I will say that our hands, our naive way to study this, these issues, we will do it by hands. It could be combined into the dressing transformation. And here we will see tau function in the different incarnations.
different incarnations. We will so explain the relation to chiral fermion. Since I am interested in promoting this story, chiral fermions in complex dimension equal to one. And since I am excited about promoting this story to, to many spectral parameters, then this story should be promoted to chiral fermions in higher dimensions. That's, that is all, that's also a piece of our study, okay? And here in dressing transformation, we will see two parts, part 2A, description of dressing transformation and part to be interpretation of it as tau function. So basically, it's my plan for today, okay? I think uh, it's enough for one day if I would not rush, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't, I actually don't want to lose you here. Okay. So my goal is not to lose you. And uh, tomorrow we will continue. Mm -hmm. Because tomorrow we would add the uh, given tile J function here. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, appearance of integrable systems is uh, not supposed to be related anyhow to how it appears in, in 2D gravity and uh, metric theory function story. Uh, basically similar integrable systems. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I don't care about integrable systems. So this is kind of introduction into given task group, however, mm -hmm. to classical piece of it. You see, I would not say that it is not related, but actually, as you will see, they look as uh, several uh, representations of something bigger. In particular, when we will study this, and we'll forget about flat time, we will see it. However, uh, it is not clear how to introduce higher genera. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so there are some uh, holes that I had not filled in, in this big picture. But I decided not to wait until I fill in all holes, okay? And present to you what, uh, what I have now, and I think it's it's a sensible enough. Okay. I, I'm always telling you that I'm telling you like from 80 to 85 percent of truth. And I consider this as a big percentage. And when I say truth, I mean not only correct formulas, but mostly correct interpretation. Okay, because this is, you see, correct interpretation, correct point of view uh, is more important than the formula. If you have proper point of view, you can easily get formulas. If you, otherwise, is not correct. That's why I, I'm, 
I hope that I am correct 85% in my interpretation of what happens, okay? So after all these preliminaries, I will slowly start, okay? So let me start by reminding you what commutativity equation is, okay? I consider a connection on the formal disk And the equation are like this. So this Z is called spectral parameter. And this is equation. So from this we see that dA equals to zero and also A square equals to zero. <coughs> In particular, if I write A as AI of T I. This equation would read So actually this means that we have a map The fact that it is uh, mm -hmm. 
the fact that uh, so I guess it's clear how to how to understand this. Dependence on T is here, and that's why I write here symmetric power. Dependence on I is here. A priori, there is no symmetry between this V and this V. I'm explaining the meaning of A. And the condition is that, uh, <coughs> that these things commute. It's what written here. And uh, this gives, uh, and this is the origin of the name commutativity. But that's why it's about commutativity. Now, let us see the meaning of the first equation. The meaning, so maybe I go too slow. The meaning of the first equation is that AI of T is actually DI of some object that I don't want to call tau, but so here I here I have some uh, problem in naming. Sometimes I, I call this tau. However, there is another tau that I would prefer to reserve for tau function. So equation one means that there is a symmetry, okay? C of T is actually a potential. I would still like to remind the relation of this equation to geometry. There is a space So here, this means compactification. Sorry, sister. Now, after we discuss toric varieties, you may see that this is a toric variety. So the idea is to explain this compactification. I'll recall it. So here there are n points on C star. And for me, C star is a cube, is a cylinder, is an infinite cylinder. So these points may collide. So when I write this, you would never even ask, could they collide or could not? Of course they could, of course they can collide. But as we studied in different parts, parts of this course, we need to explain how to compactify. So 
So I think maybe I have to repeat it. Pasha, what do you say? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's worth repeating this while I explained it before, like several months ago, because I do not assume that uh, everybody remembers everything that I said. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because now I'll explain it in a bit different context. So, so, but what what happens so so far is just annotation lm sub n. So, is it some sort? Is it supposed to be an approximation to the loop? Uh, no, it's what space the loop of loops. Tells the Lord of mine. Ah, sorry. Sorry. And this is a standard notation. Okay. It's mm -hmm. it's mostly. People mostly write like this, LM. So this is a compactification. So compactification means that we need to add some divisors. So divisors here are like this. You have L1 points here. And two points here, and here we have like infinity. So that's what you had. Once again, when I was explaining this like two months ago, I was not aware of that uh, that it is so important. I consider this just as an example of uh, what I call topological quantum field theories, as an example. But now I realized that it is very important example. It would play a lot of role. So I upgraded this from, the, from an example. You see, with an example, you hear it, you study it, you forget it, okay? No, it's... Uh, This example leads to many other things, okay? That, that, that's what I realized last several months. That's why I want to put more attention to this, okay? So you add this. And then it's a, it is interesting to study the following. To study the following map. So we will study this map, this map, and we will study this map together with in the following way. We will differential forms on element. And you consider factor factorizability. Factorizability means to that. So I'll explain what fact factorizability is. If 
M belongs to compactification, Let me try to explain this by picture. So this is C star. So Andy, what, what is I? This map. Ah, so it's the same as same as C or or A. Not really. Good question. No? Here you see differential form. A are integrals of i over the fundamental class. Oh, I see, I see, okay. Mm -hmm. or, or c is the integral over the fundamental class. Or I guess it depends on how variant. Okay. They, they are, yes. Mm -hmm. So here, so this configuration belongs to compactification of this. I think it's better, so, so here I have n points. So these square brackets mean the modular space of this data, okay? You have points, n points on C star. When I put a bar here, Lm, I mean compactification, okay? So and the, the, this bottom of the picture is chopped off by 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 the camera, but I mean it's clear. Mm -hmm. So and here I should have n one, n two, n a points. So points are just separated, and this thing is an intersection of devices. So why I'm writing it this way. So this is intersection of devices, I would say of K minus one. So divisor means that you take a partition of points. Mm -hmm. So what, are, what do these big brackets mean? This one? Yeah. This bracket means the class, uh, represent, the, the, uh, the class in compactification of the modular space as this is represented by these configurations. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, the notation is, you see, there is a modular space. Modular mm -hmm. space of what? Of something. It is easier yeah. to, to draw a picture of yeah. what? Okay? So this means, in the bracket, the modular space of such pictures. Sorry, your revenge, of the single sausage. Okay? So when we compactify, we add these. 
Because when we compactify by divisors, we definitely add intersection of divisors. So the, the pictures are uh, kind of very similar to the standard pictures of the Lin-Manford compactification. So, so, the different, so the difference is that some points are allowed to collide or, or what? So these points are allowed to collide and, for the, and it has an incoming and outgoing sum. Mm -hmm. In the Lin-Manford we can also use incoming and outgoing. However, mm -hmm. here things are like this. There is even more important difference, okay? Is mm -hmm. that this manifold is clearly a toric manifold. Um, how so? This is a toric manifold. Mm, okay. This okay. divisor is invariant under the C star action. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we can somehow compactify toric by something non-toric. Mm -hmm. but, but this is a toric compactification. So you are saying that usually the ring manifold starts with something toric, but the compactification is non-toric in Gino zero. Uh, if, if you wish, yes. The ring manifold, uh, yes. I, 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 uh, I, I would say that it is non toric. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that's not because uh, if you want to specify the circle action on the Lean Mumford stack, you have to. It's, it's like choosing a two special points, like as yes. we see in this sausage picture. That's, that's why I'm saying that this is not toric. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, it's not toric. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But so, I'm, so is this compactification a toric variety of permutohedra? Yes. yes. Oh, I see, I see. Thank you. However, this interpretation is not uh, is not uh, so I'm not using it. It is it, at the moment. Maybe I would like to use it later, but I don't know how to use this extra data at the moment. And here, of course, it is tempting to say that at some moment later we will put here two and put here two. So I'll write it and erase it. So we see that in this picture, we have one parameter. This parameter is one standing here. You see, when you see a formula, you may try to see what are the parameters in this formula. So if you know how to solve x to the x square, I know quadratic equation. You say that two is a parameter. You you start asking about cubic, fourth order, etc. Okay. So whenever you look at the formula, you try to see the parameter or construction. You try to see a parameter. And here, parameter is one that is hidden here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So idea is why not to consider points on toric variety? Hmm? Okay. And this, okay, so, okay. Uh, I think I have to explain, I, I, I have to tell it in some detail, okay? I want you to show, I want you to see the first non-trivial commutativity something coming out of this. So consider, so L, M, 
three, LM1 is a point, nothing to study. What is LM2? It's a C star together with zero and infinity. So this is CT1. Mm -hmm. And this stratification is so when we say zero, it means that we say measure coordinate of point number one with respect to point number two. Of course, uh, this comes in homogeneous coordinates. Okay, so I, I'll raise it. I'll raise this. Oh, that, that's why it's, it's called commutativity equation because we have these two strata, one, two, and two, one. Yes. So when mm -hmm. we will write, when we will go to cohomology, then this is equivalent in zero, homo, in zero homology of LS. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I will write. Okay. So I think I'm not going too fast. No, Pasha. No, no, it's it's fine. It's good. So this is. Because of this relation. Mm -hmm. Now, now I apply factorization. And here I see that, so this is commutativity. So that's why it's called commutativity. Is it somehow no, in the level, is... is it somehow in the level of Q cohomology for I or is there no Q here? Ah, no, here, no, here I don't need to go to cohomology because mm -hmm. here I, so this is a point, mm -hmm. I of yes. a point, so cohomology of a point and space of function and space of differential forms on the point are the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Now let us do one more point. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is instructive to do one more point and then you will see how it goes on. So here is certification of LM2. Let us see LM3.
LM3 contains this thing. So this is the resist structure that I would not be interested in. And here I will, here is the map that is called forget, forget. Mm -hmm. Here I'm forgetting the position of the point number three. So here I have one, two, three. Here I have one, three, two. You see, I'm just putting three everywhere where I can put it. Two, three. I guess it's clear. This is what is projected here, and this is what is projected here. Okay, I'll write it F. I am too lazy to write forgetful map. It's F map. Mm -hmm. So since these two are in the same class of homology, the pre images also are. I can even show it, I can even show a homotopy. So this is LM2. So here are these two points. LM2 is connected. Mm -hmm. I join it by a line. Then means that on LM3, I have a three fold with two boundaries, this one and that one. Okay. So this line L is lifted to some three fold. This line is not canonical, this three fold is not canonical. Or we can say in this way. So we see. That the class of this and the class of this equal to each other. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. So this one, this. Now, it means that I already have what? I already have a boundary. So let me tell you what is zero in uh, homology. I erase this equality and write here zero in homology. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. I have this thing that is zero in homology. So, what can I say? I take the integral over this. So, and Andre, it's not visible where you're writing. 
Ok. Boundary. So it's a boundary. Mm -hmm. Of what? Of the eye. And this is zero. I'll take this bound. Mm -hmm. And here I am integrating along this space. This, so I take integral i, so it's a form. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's better not to put it this way. Maybe it's better to write it this way. So we, here is the region where I'm integrating. I'm sorry. One, three, two. So I'm taking differential form on LM3 and I'm integrating it mm -hmm. over this Complex co dimension one sub manifold. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So boundary consists of four terms. Here is one plus three other terms. Here I can use factorization. It is the integral of I. And here I have one, three. So here I use factorization. Is it clear? Um, let me see. So what's, what's the dimension of this first cycle? Is it a real dimension? Is it two or four? It has dimension, uh, complex dimension is one. A real dimension is two. Um, so let me see. So it's, it's up to nervous transformations or up to rescalings. Because, because this picture M means, it not mean, stands for its notation. So up to C star. Or C star to the M. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So up, up to scalings and rotations, yeah. Yes, and here I need to say compactification, clear mm -hmm. compactification. So I'm integrating not over C star, I'm integrating over compactification. Mm -hmm. So now, I have the vector space V, after all. And uh, I want to say that I alpha would go from one to the dimension 
of the space V. For alpha going from one to k. So it basically means that I pick pick a basic. So, so sorry, where did this I alpha appear? What what is this I alpha about? Now, what? So what is this I alpha? You see this I, this I yes. is a tensor. Yes. That's a tensor. So it takes V. Okay, yeah. V is associated to each point inside. So there is a basis mm -hmm. in V. Okay. So I alpha would mean the following would mean the component would mean the basis basic vector associated to the else point mm -hmm. so previously previously when I get something like CI, CJ equals CJ, CI. Now, here let me rewrite this term. Define. I1, I2, that belongs well to endomorphism of W. So for particular I1, I2, it belongs to endomorphism of W. Mm -hmm. I prefer to write it this way because here you can trace which index comes to which point. Mm -hmm. It's not because I cannot write it invariantly. Mm -hmm. It's just because in this way I find I find it more geometrically. So it's a quad quadratic term in the expansion of this uh, potential C. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let us see. So now, now we can write down this equation. Mm -hmm. C I one I three. Ah, unfortunately, I write this. Okay. C I two plus C I one C I two I three. You see, when you write it this way, you easily see that it is a third point that goes from first sausage to the second sausage. Equals. To the same thing where one and two are interchanged. Mm -hmm. So and you have a lot of this. So it's instructive to see that uh, that these are integrated into equation that I wrote before. Okay. 
So let us see how it goes. So let's see B. C I T I plus C I J C I T J plus avatar. Let us plug it here. You see, I know that uh, I am uh, explaining this very elementary, but I think it's better for understanding. So let us see the first term, CI, CJ. So here is the sum, CI, CJ, DTI, DTJ, okay? So this is commutativity. Now here, CI, DTI. CKL, TK, DTL. You see, maybe, maybe there is one half sitting here. Mm -hmm. But when I differentiate, I get this. So maybe it's better to put, to divide by half here. Yes. Because it's a piece of exponent. So I have this piece, plus. CKL, CKDTL, CI, DTI. So now please group term, okay? When you will group terms here, you will see exactly this equation. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. here you would like to pick up the point TK and see what happens in front of the point TK. You see, it's funny that all these combinatorics is picked up into this equation. You see, here I have some kind of combinatorics and topology, and here I have something very, very differential geometry. Hmm? So you, you didn't tell us how to construct this differential form I, right? Yes. So you see, mm -hmm. because uh, today and tomorrow, I will play the following game. Suppose, uh, so I'm going to study these equations and their, and its properties. Mm -hmm. okay. Because let me tell you something that analogy Suppose I'm going to tell you, I'm going to discuss with you this equation, okay? Which is, I, I, well, it's, it's above the cutoff. Analogy. Mm -hmm. Suppose I'm going 
to discuss with you with you this equation. Mm -hmm. And as I look, it's a, it's a nice equation, quadric and something. Let us study it as a quadric, and then you will tell tell me. Look, I have not told you how to construct solutions to this equation. But I will tell you. Look, Pasha, there is the triangle with x, y, and z. And that's how these solutions to this equation come geometrically. However, this equation has more solutions, even if x, y, and z are not real. Are, 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 they could be negative. They could be complex. <laughs> Yeah. So very, very good. <laughs> still, it's a nice equation. Yeah. However, it, it, it has geometrical origin. So my attitude here is very similar. I am describing you a construction. What is important is that solutions to this equation have geometrical origin mm -hmm. but, uh, but if you want an, if you want an example of, of i then we should go to something like a model again or no oh, so so it has b model hmm. which the formation of complex structures mm -hmm. So, so that's what I was explaining. That how, how, what happens when you deform complex structures? You are coming to solution to this equation that, so I don't know all names, but definitely among them, there is Kyoji Sizer and some other people. But isn't it given? But isn't it given to us J or I function gives you a sort of solution to this equation? I, I, so, so given uh, that, that's what we will discuss later on, exactly. And, the, and, and this is the mirror of given time. But, uh, but you see, so Kyoji site of work is of 82. Before, I think, before Italian geometers worked on. <coughs> quantum mechanics with superpotential. You know, it's very hard to see what comes first. You know, actually, this commutativity was hard to see in the deformation of complex structure because, uh, let me tell you why. It's because here, here important thing is multiplication. However, if you consider the moduli of complex structures, you would say they are Beltrami differentials. What would happen if you multiply them? Of course, you have polyvector. Mm -hmm. But you would say polyvector is not uh, a deformation. So that's mm -hmm. why in order, so it's important thing. I'm trying to explain why people missed this in uh, algebraic geometry or in Keller geometry of 60. Where there were such great people as Kadaira and Spencer, whom we respect very much. Do you respect Kadaira and Spencer? I do. You don't. <laughs> you don't. Okay. No, 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 it's, it's just uh, the, the conversation takes a new turn. Okay, okay, so, okay, <laughs> okay, I say that, okay, in the 60s, okay, it, it, it starts to be politically incorrect. No, it becomes, it becomes like, I don't know how to say it. Okay, okay, right, right, okay, in six, so, so this was missed in 60s, because in 60s, uh, there was no idea that uh, the tangent vectors, that there is a multiplication on the differ on the tangent space to deformation of complex uh, structures. 
-hmm. It's because people studied only what now we call geometrical deformation of complex structures. You know, this uh, almost complex structures with integrability condition. Mm -hmm. So, 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 the, so, the very question, what would happen if we multiply them, looked pretty silly these days. Okay, for those people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Of, of how how to multiply Beltrami differential? Multiplication of Beltrami differential is not a Beltrami differential. Okay. At the same time, people knew that uh, it was, people knew that it was possible to multiply Hochschild cohomology. Okay. So there was multiplication, but there was no uh, Hodge Deram degeneration there. Because uh, Hochschild cohomology, there was multiplication, but uh, what we called Hodge side connection was unclear. So, so it was like this until two things happened. In the uh, physicists discovered supersymmetry. During supersymmetry, People discuss people discovered uh, supersymmetric quantum mechanics. Okay, so let me comment. In sixties, there were two different subjects. Keller geometry. So there was Hodge theory for cohomology. But I have never thought about, never heard. Multiplication of built run. There was also Hochschild for homology, but no clear Hodge theory. So these two things were different. So Hochschild for homology were known to be polyvector. So it was clear how to multiply them, but it was not clear how to transpose them in the Hodge way. Now, now the new thinking in 70s. Super symmetry. dimensional flat space we have shifts as a symmetry shift isometries and the conserved uh, quantities and these are super symmetry and people started to study this in where? In quantum field theory. In D. Mostly greater than one. Nobody was interested in one. 
However, some people realize that if we put d equal to 1, we would have something interesting. And here we will see Hodge package. Depending on amount of supersymmetry, there will be Hodge package uh, for real co Hodge theory and for complex Hodge theory. And this will turn out to be Laplacian. However, while physicists were constructing quantum field theories, they discovered such an, interest, such an interesting thing as superpotential. Great. Inside from quantum field theory. like this. Ah, and here we see that we have built Rami differential here and function here. And that's how people discovered the generalized complex structure in the sense how we call it written uh, Gerasimov, Baranikov, Kansevich. Written Gerasimov, Baranikov, Kansevich. Now we call it. So we discovered a piece of it. We discovered few differentials that depends on function and on the differential. So now it's possible to multiply. Finally, it's possible to multiply. And there is a Hodge theory. Together with Hodge theory. So and there are works of Italian mathematicians. of 70 that studied this thing in parallel with the Hodge package. And uh, I think that uh, Chikotti, whom you know, borrowed uh, some piece of knowledge out of that. And from this, we are getting this equation. So interpretation of this equation in terms of moduli spaces is uh, a piece of what I did. So Pasha, you asked me, how could we see solutions to this? So yes. this is one mm -hmm. of the solutions to this equation. You may ask, where are the points? Marked points here. Mm No, but, so, so, sorry, you were talking about supersymmetric quantum mechanics now, but we need to go into complex dimension one. Of course. Of source, right? Sure, sure, Pasha, sure. That's what mm -hmm. I'll do it. Of course, I'll mm -hmm. do it for you immediately. Mm -hmm. Of course. Of course, we'll go to complex dimension. To complex dimension one, of course. I put here differential form in. I put here differential form out. 
I think I also, I also don't understand. And in these pictures, they are not about deformations of complex structures. They are about configurations of points on a world sheet. And th th that's what I'm trying. That's what I'm going to explain to you. Of course, mm -hmm. of course. But but you see, I need to explain two things. First mm -hmm. of all, how deformations are. So I need to explain two things. So let us forget the history. Mm -hmm. How deformations are related to configuration space. Question number one. Question number two. Where second dimension come from, right? Mm -hmm. So let me see how much time did I spend because, you know, I spoke for, so we definitely need to have to make a break. Mm -hmm. You see. Yes. Yes. You know, I can I can go on and on, but uh, we need to have breaks, and now we need to have a big break, ten minutes. All right, all right. Twelve minutes, very big break. Oh. Oh, very luxurious, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Hello. Hey, yes. Okay. <coughs> Meanwhile, I realized why mathematics is different from philosophy because in philosophy you have wisdom in mathematics you also have wisdom however in mathematics you can uh, illustrate your wisdom with a lot of uh, clear and doable examples and in philosophy it's uh, it's much harder to do it okay so, still I'm trying to explain how deformations are related to configuration space. Actually, it was what I started with this course, but uh, I understand that in order to To see what actually is going on, one has to take a journey and only then uh, recall what did we started with. You see, it's always complicated to explain something, something non trivial, because uh, when I am explaining some construction, you will pre possibly not uh, remember it because you don't know where are we going and when we are close to the goal you definitely forget the construction so uh, there is a problem to put together construction and the goal so the only way how to go how to do it is to repeat Okay, that's why repetition is necessary. So after several repetitions, things hopefully would come together. So we studied deformation. Suppose we have Q differential and we would like to deform it. And moreover, suppose we would like to to see connection on its cohomology. So what we know is that uh, in this case we should use homotopy So it's very important thing. And uh, in particular, <clears throat> you may study the The bicomplex here, if the formation goes okay. And having bicomplex, 
it's it's pretty natural to write down something like this and here we have homotopy okay so these may be considered as a um, connection on uh, cohomology if there are no obstructions now here we have homotopy okay in many cases delta q belongs to the class of operator that you would like like differential operators homotopy is something that you don't like in differential geometry something like integral operator so you start you probably study homotopy in functional analysis but you would like to stay uh, inside the class you want so that's why it's better to go to unnormalized homotopy, namely Namely, study H that equals to unnormalized homotopy times Q. So you need to keep in mind that H is like D star or IV or something like this. And this is like Laplacian, Lee derivative, something like this. So if you write it in this way, you are uh, in the scope of uh, differential operators. By the way, here you see supersymmetric quantum mechanics or topological mechanics. And this was my starting example. So here I'm coming to this <coughs> issue. Now, H is H tilde over, so small H, H tilde over big H. You see this is normalization. For which we can write down the integral formula to put here i or not to put here i is the question so if you plug homotopy here you see the integral on the, over the configuration space of points on the line. This ray, so for this ray you put cohomology. 
Here we put derivatives. Here we put h. So you integrate here actually on r n over r. And surely there is a factorization property. Let me write down something. So, Pasha. Yes, uh, so Andre, I think that's clear, but uh, so still, this is configuration space of points and where, where's, the, where's the deformation of complex structures? So do you want to say that Q is del bar and delta Q is a deformation? Oh, well, you see, uh, at, at the moment, at the moment, I am talking in very general terms. Yes. So it's not necessarily, so del bar is just kind of example. You, you, so at the moment, I, I, I explained where where we have this r to the n over r yes so first statement is that any deformation problem comes to this r to the n over r so deformation problem in the in the complex okay now mm -hmm. second question is how second dimension come in right Mm -hmm. And the answer is the second dimension come in because now we now we study a special case. Okay. So the formula you just wrote is the deformation of the induced differential and cohomology. It's uh, so. So the formula, the formula I wrote, is uh, basically the connection on cohomology. Mm. The formula was surrounded by uh, inclusion of, of cohomology and projection to cohomology is just the formula of homological perturbation lemma. So it's the induced differential on cohomology, right? Yes. Okay. yes. You, you, you may also look at it this way. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now let us consider the special case of this construction. Mm -hmm. And this special case is, imagine 
the there is a super group acting on everything. And we would like to study this equivalently with respect to this supergroup. So dimension, so complex dimension one come when, when we have this very particular supergroup. And this supergroup is U1, U11. It's super algebra. Super algebra of U1, 1, 1 consists of two generators. One generator that has conventional notation L0 minus or just L minus. And another G minus. And also Q extra, it has extra Q, so Q G minus equals to L minus. But it's a super algebra. So this is even, this is odd. The same Q, Q is the same. And of course, QL minus equals to zero. So in particular, in particular, all cohomology would be in kernel of L, of L minus. And of course, you will see the, the geometrical realization of this. It is the loop and we have rotation. These are these L minus. And we have, since uh, we are acting on the Durham complex of something, this L minus has a super partner. I'm telling this because you may ask, why are we so stupid and why are we not uh, using other groups like U1? And the answer is, of course, yes. The most natural thing to consider, Pasha, how do you think? What is the most natural generalization of U1 in this context? Mm. Well, I know several copies of you one or okay one thing one trick would be to use you one square mm -hmm. one opportunity you one square mm -hmm. and conjecturally that's how we can go to epsilon one epsilon two in Nikrasov series mm -hmm. However, there is another opportunity. Non-abelian. 
Yes. Yes, you too. Then here we will get dimension that is again four. So there is this T called time, and there is this rotation. So rotations have coordinate five. So here, instead of rotations, we can have this. And of course, we expect to see this in the supersymmetric uh, field theories in dimension four. But you know, I just point the, I just point to this door. I am not going to this door, okay? Maybe next return we will go to this door. But at the moment I show it to you. Then I hope that in one or two months I will tell you that uh, in the beginning of April I show this door and now we are ready to enter it, okay? But here I show it to you for the first time. Now, now let us do this equivalently with respect to this group, super U1. I think I don't know how to call this group, maybe U11. This is even, this is odd. So so here we have, so here we can promote two to this. And here I have two parameters, T and phi. Mm -hmm. And I put something here like delta T. However, these parameters should be promoted to differential forms. Okay, I'll write it for your commodity. I prefer to call it G plus. This is unnormalized homotopy. Okay, let me consider this. So you definitely see here the space that is LM2. With the two points. T1, T2, T, okay, maybe here I will put two. T equals T1 minus T2. There are also two angles, phi2 
and phi 1. Phi is phi 2 minus phi 1. Okay? Now there are some subtleties. One of the subtleties is uh, factorization. Factorization means when t goes to plus infinity, naive circle t equals plus infinity phi 2 minus phi, phi 1 is phi shrinks to a point you see this is a two dimensional space I, I go to one dimensional boundary Naively, I have a boundary. However, condition is that uh, this should look like a point and not like a circle. So basically, the idea is that, that it would be done if the integral of g minus d phi from 0 to 2 pi acting on homology of q should be zero. And this is called the Hodge condition. So Andre, it's not visible what you're writing now. Thank you. Hodge condition. Oh, don't we want just g, in g minus to vanish yes, on it's HQ? The same. It's the same. I'm just trying to explain how g minus came out. The mm -hmm. integral should go to zero. But this integral is, is one of two pi. So g minus mm -hmm. hq should be zero. Is it the same that you previously called string condition? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it does mean that we select special q cycles that satisfy this condition, or we want it to be true for all? So uh, it's uh, so so. This is a piece of data. We need decomposition. We also need a steel that would be a homotopy. You see, actually, to be a homotopy, it's uh, It's not easy, actually. In particular, uh, so how to explain? So, so we <coughs> kind of condition. In particular, this operator should vanish on inclusion of cohomology.
So if we take wrong H tilde, we can subtract something here. So in particular, if this does not vanish here, we may subtract its section. So, by the way, in, in already in one dimensional case, one of the examples that you are listing, the when uh, this homotopy is the contraction with the vector field, doesn't really contract to cohomology, it contracts to something bigger. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But uh, if I want to contract to, ho to homology, I should be careful in writing what 1 over h means. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. Because uh, sometimes you see there could be zeros here. So, mm -hmm. so but but most tricky thing is that H, that if I pick up H somehow, mm -hmm. and uh, this inclusion somehow, in general case H tilde does not do, does not annihilate this this term. Mm -hmm. You know who was the first person who, dis who discovered this? It's funny. The first person who discovered this and discovered that a subtraction is needed is Enrico Fermi. Ah, so, okay, today I have Italian day. Enrico Fermi. Mm -hmm. in the, during uh, exactly in the middle of the 20th century. Okay, so since we are supposed to be mathematical physicists, let me consider another example. Consider such Q. H is belongs to the endomorphisms of the space U. Q acts on U times E squared. Is this one. Mm -hmm. or equivalently Q acts on U times complex number of C. C square is zero, C is odd. Maybe it's better to write it this way. Mm -hmm. so then it is clear how to write down the formation. Q plus delta Q is of course C H plus delta H. Okay. What happens with connection? Okay, what, what happens with homology of Q? So before the formation, homology was the kernel. Mm -hmm. Kernel of, of H. What happens after the formation? Well, some, some zero modes will be killed. Yes. So, uh, so you may say that uh, homology is dropped. Mm hmm. However, 
Enrico Fermi was clever enough to say that no, in this case, we will change the theory. By what? By killing abstraction. He was a great physicist and also a great man. However, it's, it's obvious, but okay. I want to give him some credit. He said that we will not go like this. No, we will go like this. Huh? Wasn't he great? What was this? He says that uh, this that here cohomology is dropped. Mm -hmm. However, if we accompany change of Hamiltonian by change of energy, we can still keep cohomology. Because cohomology of this operator is given by by this curve. Well, I mean, no, generally you will not restore homology this way. If E is a constant, I can in general keep only one. But if I'll be as clever as for me, I'll put here some matrix. I'll call it even this, where delta E is a matrix, is an operator, so it should be an operator. So you project to cohomology. Okay, let me let me put it this way. You project to I's cohomology or to alpha's cohomology. You insert the beta's cohomology, and here you have it. Delta epsilon delta beta. So that's what you are doing. You have this matrix. Hmm. You know, uh, maybe I'll explain it in more details later when it will come down to mm -hmm. infrared divergences. But, but okay, Pasha, well, let me say how I'll do it. Mm -hmm. This is the door. We are going along the corridor. And I'm telling you doors where you may or may not enter. Okay, so, so doing this, you may actually kill the abstraction. And killing the abstraction means that you are computing so-called shift of energy in Enrico Fermi. It's called golden rule of Enrico Fermi. Golden rule of Enrico Fermi. So I would say the door is, it is very instructive to reconsider the golden rules of Enrico Fermi from the point of view 
of uh, homological perturbation theory. Okay. So, uh, yes. Uh, so actually, he did it basically at the same time as uh, mm, who studied spectral sequence in the ray. What? Le, the ray. Or? The ray. Yes. So, so this. This uh, spectral uh, sequence of double complex were actually discovered approximately at the same time. And I think during the Second World War in geometry by Lerre mm -hmm. in concentration camp, uh, in uh, physics by Enrico Fermi, and basically during Manhattan Project. Mm. Okay. So, so Andre, I, I, I feel like we have gone on a sort of wild big tangent uh, where uh, the initial question was is still not, not answered, right? Uh, okay, so, it, so, okay, so, so well, let us go here. Okay, so here you see the dimension, the real dimension too. So you the question here. was, the question was about, uh, okay, all, all of this is about configuration spaces of points and the degenerations of, the, of that moduli space, sure. Uh, but uh, there was a claim that all this has to do with uh, deformations of complex structures and that sort of- Of course, of course. Because, is not... because what I put here, sorry, not Q, but Delta Q. So you're saying that here you, you, you will choose a particular Q and then it will have to do with so, so uh, this is the general story. Yes. This general story could be on uh, the theory of maps of, uh, okay. It could be more theory on the loop space. In this mm -hmm. case, it will be a module. Or mm -hmm. I could take another representation. And in this case, it will be the formation of complex structure and it will be B model. So A model in general and B model in general are two, are two different representations of the same structure. Mm -hmm. And mirror phenomena is that sometimes uh, they are the same representation. Mm -hmm. But you see before, but before we say that they are the same, they should be the same structure. So, so in the case of A module, it is clear, we have trajectory on the space of loops and then we rotate, okay? So it will be A module representation. In the case of B module, we do not have any loops. In the case of B model, Q is the bar. H is something like the flasher. H tilde non-normalized is D bar dagger. However, it's interesting to know who is G minus and G minus is D. And when we have it this way, it becomes clear how to treat it equivariantly, okay? Because in this presentation, the symmetry is a contraction with the, with the phi.
By the way, you may ask me, so what? And I'll tell you that the change of delta Q So, so here is delta Q standing here, but what, what stands here is just poly vector fields. In B model, we have poly vector field standing here. It's not exactly delta Q because delta Q, I'm sorry. So on this model, it will, will have pole standing here. Delta Q would be would come out when we integrate our DeFi. G minus poly vector. So and let us see. Is it is it correct? Yes. It is correct. Delta Q is actually D poly vector. Depending on representation, here we can have a, a BV operator. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it depends. Okay. So here we have D poly vector. Okay. In particular, delta mu equals to commutator of D times, sorry, not delta mu. So this is commutator D and uh, contraction by mu considered as a vector. With values in and this. This is geometrical deformation of complex structure. This is general. Mm -hmm. So I actually want you would you, would like you to evaluate this picture because this picture is a core of uh, A and B models. And what, what, what is it? What is in, in A, in A model, so Q is D straight, and what is H twiddle? In, in A model, Q is uh, D straight. Yes, and what is H twiddle? So, so H, A, H twiddle uh, is uh, contra it's contraction with- uh, with, oh. with what? I, 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 need to, I, I need to be more explicit. What it is an A model and a B model. Okay, in A model. Mm. In A model, well, I had a good, I had a nice pencil, but being too emotional, I lost it in A model. The space so there is a space of forms. Mm -hmm. wow. O 
upon the loop space. So this is a loop space. So unlike in B where it was just just forms. L minus L minus is the lead derivative with respect to D over D phi. Rotation of the loop. Mm -hmm. So H is, is the following. Is lead derivative over the special vector field U, where U is the following. You take a complex structure and you construct there you can track this you need to find you need to decide to find the vector field u m or sigma which is this mm -hmm. so you, you take a rotation of the loop and this is a function so it's a tangent vector yes so how can you write it you write it as uh, d x m <coughs> Okay. Maybe you put here I, maybe not. I don't remember this right. I, I guess in this presentation, no, no. So what else do I need? There is G minus. It's a contraction with this vector field. So actually here you have a polymorphic trajectory. And uh, this understanding is due to Floyer. Mm -hmm. And Arnold. I don't remember who started. Maybe Arnold, maybe Florian. So here you definitely have these trajectories. Holomorphic maps. So it's A model. And in A model, you don't have poly vectors. In A model, you have uh, evaluation of differential forms at the corresponding point, at some point sigma. So you have a loop with coordinate sigma of phi. Uh, here is sigma, then sigma turns out to be phi. So evaluation at one. Of differential forms. So loop is mapped to the space X. You may evaluate it soon. In point zero on the loop. You may show that that this is exactly the same as uh, Gromov Witten observable. <coughs> so so that's how you get A model. But but most interesting thing that it's not about A model and B model. It's uh, that, that there could be some mixtures, okay? So A model and B model are just representations. Mm -hmm. Okay, let, let me make a comparison. Just imagine that you are playing with 
representations of uh, orthogonal groups. Okay. So you are playing uh, with uh, even orthogonal groups. So you say, oh, great. There are vectors and there are spinners. And, and in generally they are different. However, for SO8, vectors and spinners are the same. What's this? This is a game. This is not serious. Okay. What is serious is to understand, first of all, that there is a notion of representation. And there are some representations that are vectors, some that are spinners. And there are other representations that are neither vectors nor spinners. In particular, you can tend the representation. Okay? In this way, you can get new representations. Moreover, you can uh, play not only with orthogonal groups. There are many other groups. Okay? Well, that's what I call mathematics. But if you say, I am studying only vectors and spinner representations, and in particular representations of SO8, it's not mathematics. It's pre mathematics. Okay? Tricks. So, if you consider mirror symmetry, so if you say, I am interested only in mirror symmetry, it's, uh, it's a pity. Mirror symmetry is an example of something. That some structures in some particular cases are equal to each other. Okay. So, uh, so I'm trying to explain to you the structure. And in particular case. It can be A model. It can be B model. And in the very particular case. B model could be equal to A model. But structures are uh, more important than tricky examples. Okay? So configuration spaces and different dimension, it's a structure. Okay? Homological algebra associated to it, it's a structure. Equivariance here, here on these trajectories in, in the A model, we have equivariance associated to the contraction of this vector field. Moreover, in the B model, we also have this equivariance. And we have this Z parameter here. So we may understand the Z as an equivalent parameter here. And it is exactly the same Z that, have, that appears in the formula. This Z. And this Z is the same Z. Okay. Uh, the board is cut off. Mm -hmm. This Z and this Z is the same Z. <coughs> okay, so that's how all this is related. Okay, so what time is it now? 
It's, uh, well, I, 5.46 in my time zone, but in, in 14 minutes, I'll have to... Yes, yes, couple. yes, we, we, we have, we have, at least there is tradition. We have very traditional kata. Kata. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it means that we study this structure. So, So what so, so sorry. just imagine that we have this. So what is Q in a model? It is the RAM, right? The RAM. Ah, the RAM, yes. Okay. So, but ah, but on the loop space, yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, just on the just re, let me remind that that the main equation here related to configuration space is this equation. So. So if you have differential, so what uh, what are you asking when you have differential? You are asking about its cohomology, right? So, so let me tell you some problems. Ah, so you see, I have only uh, ten minutes. Okay, so it's uh, it's time. To give you some problems, maybe you'll try to think about them just for five or ten minutes. It will save some time tomorrow. So, first question is deformation theory. So, here is something new. We are studying, we are trying to study deformation theory. So uh, we, we may say that we, uh, so we can say that A is DC, okay? So we are studying deformation theory equivalently, this deformation theory. How to study it? C goes to C plus del delta C, okay? So C is a vector uh, valued function. It's an endomorphism valued function. So we have dc plus delta c, dc plus delta c, commutator equal to zero. So even if we don't put commutator here, just multiply. So from this we see dc, d delta c plus d delta c dc equals to zero. Now, how to solve this equation? So, so first, let us try to see how to solve equation like this. dc wedge e, as well, e commutator equals to zero. So how to solve this equation under this condition? So this, this says that DC is differential, right? And this says that uh, something is uh, closed. So that's why E is what? Maybe it's exact. Okay. DC 
plus. This is exact means EF. This seems to be a solution. Okay. However, is it a solution? Not quite. Because E should be E should be D delta C. So E has to be what? Has to be exact. As differential form. So what f? What is f? F is a function. Of course, the endomorphism value. Question: How to find such a function that dc commutator with this n valued function is uh, exact? So the question would be first to find some solution and then to find the general solution. So first, could you guess some solution? So th 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 that's that was the problem. Uh, and uh, for a bottle of beer in uh, 20, 2005, I asked uh, students in uh, Twente, Netherlands, to solve this problem in several minutes. Unfortunately for me, Robert Digraff was there, and he solved it with the, instead of students. So I owe him a bottle of beer. So how to solve this? Mm -hmm. So E has to be exact. F is a function. Sorry, can you not take F just constant? Great. Wait. You can actually take F being constant. So would you be 15 years ago in 20? You would got a bottle of beer <laughs> instead of Robert Dijkraft. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes. So first solution is, of course, f equals to constant. But what is a general solution? Let us apply d to e. The left-hand side has to be 0. The right-hand side has to be dc wedge df. commutator equal to zero. So F equal to constant is a good solution. But there are other solutions. Mm -hmm. Do you see this equation on this blackboard, on this whiteboard? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. It's here. So we can do it again mm -hmm. and again and again. So every time we will get constants, right? No, I, I didn't understand. I mean, ah, yes, yes, okay, yeah. So uh, let us call the Donald solution. Uh, Digraph Donald solution, constant, DD solution, mm -hmm. but it's a constant. So it is constant here, 
And then we can also say that df is dc times second constant. And again. So, you can easily see that the deformation space to the space of solution is <coughs> is a loop group. Set Why? of constants. Set of constants. Loop algebra, sorry. It's not clear yet. Why it's loop, why it is a loop algebra? Not clear. But you see, that you can easily consider this huge tangent space. And you may ask, okay, it is the first order deformation. How should I do the second order deformation? And you may think that it could be abstracted and that it is complicated. Yes? However, uh, you would be wrong. Sorry, where do we see the loop algebra here? For that, we need some formal power series in Z and Z inverse, or, or what? Yeah, but okay, for, here formal power series in Z. Okay, almost loop. Half loop algebra. Mm -hmm. Because we can iterate this procedure on and on. Um, so there is. A, a, so there is. Where, where, where is the where is the dependence? Set of constants. First constant, second constant, third constant. Equation repeats itself. When you I'm are sure embracing I... it. I'm not sure I understand. Okay. Your... You have the following equation. DC, wage. Wage X is zero and also DX is zero. I'm just rewriting these equations. Mm -hmm. So, x is dc commutator with constant. Okay. Plus. So, here, okay. Okay, well, let me put it this way. Consider x in the form dc wedge f. Okay. Plug it here. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is so. Here you have dc df equals zero. Here we have solution. that f is constant still yet it, 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 it could be a function so it's the first solution but also but actually df is dc times f tilde sorry this i don't understand you said that it is constant, so why are we writing anything else? So it's because, five. Because f is constant is is a solution. Okay, so why are we not stopping there? Because not only constants are solution. Okay. F is a constant is a solution. But there are other solutions, like dc f tilde. Okay. Now, applying D here, 
We are coming to DC, DF tilde is zero. Mm -hmm. So you're the saying that is constant. Is another solution, but we are not stopping there. Mm -hmm. So X is DC times F being constant. Plus. Plus DC wedge F that it is non constant. F that is non constant is solution of this. I can take. I, I can say that if F tilde is constant, then F of then F of C times F tilde and I can call it constant plus etc. And you can go on and on. Mm -hmm. Later, we need to take the integrals. Mm -hmm. So these constants form an infinite dimensional vector. So mm -hmm. the tangent space is an infinite dimensional vector whose elements are operators. Mm -hmm. And this is the tangent space to the space of solutions. Actually, in some cases, there are also some cohomology, but for semi simple, that's it. So, uh, you see this huge deformation space. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is that uh, this deformation space could be integrated. Mm -hmm. And we can have so-called dressing transformation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and, and the, I apologize, I, I must decouple. Yes, yes. But it's exactly, Pasha, it's good that you, mm -hmm. that you are go going because we have a natural cutoff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So thank you. And we will continue tomorrow according the line. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.